Shanghai, with a population of 24 million people, is the largest, richest and most modern city in China. It's here you will find not only the center of finance, but a taste of China's technological progress while still retaining its Chinese root and European influences. And within an hour from Shanghai are Hangzhou and Suzhou, two cities renowned as heaven on earth for centuries with their beautiful scenery, traditional gardens and serene waterways. I hope you will enjoy the videos of my 8 days journey in Shanghai, Hangzhou and Suzhou and inspire you to plan your own trip to these destinations. I will include some essential guides related to e-wallet, transportation and online map at the end of the video as well. On the first day, it is recommended to start early at Yuyuan Garden as this is one of the places that gets crowded fast. It is the most impressive classical garden in Shanghai and is a must visit. It dates back to the Ming Dynasty or about 400 years ago and consists of six scenic areas. You can expect to see classical architecture, sculptures, carvings, pavilions, bridges and ponds that are representative of Chinese gardens. To reach here, take the Metro Line 10 and get off at Yuyuan Station, leaving at Exit 1. After exploring the garden, drop by Yuyuan Bazaar located beside it. There are many shops selling food, snacks, souvenirs, arts and crafts. Remember to bargain hard on the prices if you decide to buy anything. The area is lighted up beautifully at night, though Yuyuan Garden would be closed. There are sometimes seasonal decorations such as fish lanterns as seen in this video. The famous food to sample here is Lu Bolang Restaurant and the Nanxiang steam bun restaurant selling Xiaolong Bao. The price may be on the high side, so if you prefer, there are tons of other food and snacks stores to choose from. Another point of interest is the small city god temple located at the bazaar. It is a Taoist temple with 600 years of history. There is a small entrance fee and upon entry you can collect 3 incense for free. After lunch, I visited the Shanghai Ocean Aquarium. It is the fourth largest aquarium in Asia and has the longest viewing tunnel in the world at 168 meters. It is a good place to visit if you have children on your trip or if you love marine life. It is located next to the Oriental Pearl Tower, which is another famous attraction in Shanghai. Take the Metro Line 2 to Lujiazui Station, leaving Exit 1. The marine exhibits are sectioned according to various habitat regions. Alternatively, I would recommend going to Shanghai Museum, one of the best museums in China. 
Unfortunately, it is closed for renovation during the time of my visit. Located just 30 meters from the aquarium is a branch of Yang's fried dumplings. This is a pan-fried version of the soupy xiao long bao that you can choose uh, different fillings. Hasty and affordable, so I would recommend to give it a try. The restaurant can be found in many cities and locations. While at the Lujiazui area, don't miss out on visiting the second tallest tower in the world, the Shanghai Tower. It is within walking distance from Shanghai Aquarium. Just look for the tallest tower and walk towards it. A good photo spot to capture the three tall structures are at the elevated pedestrian crossing. Find the spot by looking for the group of people who are taking photographs. Being at 632 meters tall, it is just second to the Burj Khalifa Tower in Dubai in terms of height. At 546 meters, the observation deck is the tallest in the world. A tip for the visit is that if the top of the tower is not visible from the ground due to cloudy conditions, you will not be able to see the ground from the observation deck as well. Best time to visit is just before sunset so you can enjoy both the day and night view. To end day 1, get across Wangpu River to Diban using Metro Line 2 or 10 and get off at, at East Nanjing Station. This area is the most iconic landmark of Shanghai with many buildings built in various international architectural styles during the colonial era. In the evening, buildings on both sides of Wangpu River are illuminated, bringing into contrast the past and today's Shanghai. On the second day, first destination is the Jade Buddha Temple. Take Metro Line 13 to Jiangling Road Station, leaving Exit 4. It is an active Buddhist temple with around 70 resident monks. The original temple, built in 1882, was destroyed during the revolution against Qing Dynasty, and the current temple was completed in 1928. Not very old compared to most historical sites in China. It is still a worthwhile place to visit for the spiritual experience. The highlights are a sitting Buddha and a reclining Buddha carved from whole piece of jade, hence the temple name. Another famous temple to visit while in Shanghai is the Jing'an Temple. You can get here by taking Metro Line 2 or 7 to Jing'an Temple Station, leaving Exit 1. This place is less popular than the Jade Buddha Temple, however, Jing'an Temple has a much longer history. It was first built in the Three Kingdoms period in 247 AD and later moved to the current location during the Southern Song Dynasty on year 1216, which is about 800 years ago. At this point of my trip, I went to Suzhou for two days and Hangzhou for another two days. I will cover those cities in separate videos. So here I time skip to after my return to Shanghai. A quick reminder to like and subscribe my channel to be notified of these videos. While in Shanghai, I took the opportunity to visit Team Lab Borderless Shanghai. Originally started in Japan, it now has locations in many countries. Come here to experience unique art installations utilizing color, light, sound, smell, and touch. Take Metro Line 4 or 8 to Sijang South Road Station going out exit 2. Next up is a walk through the former French concession area in Shanghai. This area, administered by France, started in 1849 and progressively grew until 1943. During that period, the area is known to be the best residential and retail district in Shanghai. The area still retains a distinct character where you will notice European style buildings and three lined streets. Shown on the screen is the recommended walking route. 
Start by taking Metro Line 10 to Xin Tian Di Station. Xin Tian Di and Tian Zi Fang are areas where you can see old Shukuman style residences. This refers to housing with stone door frames and wooden uh, doors that is a mix of Chinese and Western architectural styles. Xin Tian Di is now heavily redeveloped with boutiques, restaurants and cafes. Dr. Sun Yat-sen is known as the father of modern China. He is still revered in both China and Taiwan. And here at his former residence, you can get a fascinating insight into his life and contribution. Unlike Xin Tian Di, Tian Zi Fang retains the maze-like feel of old residential area, but now filled with arts and craft stores as well as food and snacks. On the final day, take an early trip to Zhujiazhou Water Town. There are water towns near Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Suzhou cities. If you are in Shanghai, Zhujiazhou would be the best option, and as such, it's important to start early as it is very popular. The other alternative is Qibao, but it is much smaller. Zhujiazhou is about 50 kilometers from Shanghai but is accessible by Shanghai Metro. Take the Metro Line 17 to Zhujiazhou Station and walk about 15 minutes. Here you will find a very scenic town with waterways, 36 ancient bridges and temples. There are also plenty of restaurants, bars and coffee shops as you wander the town. Many of the buildings date back to Ming and Qing Dynasty, which is as far back as 1700 years ago. Places that I would recommend checking out is Kezi Yuan, Hexin Yuan, Fangsheng Bridge, which is the largest stone art bridge in Shanghai, built in 1571. If you have been to Chinese Garden before, the ones you see here are quite good. However, if it would not compare to the best Chinese red gardens in China, which are located in Suzhou. Returning to Shanghai, it is time to explore Nanjing Road. This pedestrian area is the main shopping district of Shanghai and stretches 5.5 km from Diban to Jing'an Temple. You can get here by Metro Line 2 or 10 to East Nanjing Road Station. Expect to see a lot of malls, shops, restaurants and hotels here. Besides the usual western brands, do check out the Chinese brands that you may not get to see in your country. If you are hungry, there are several food courts located along the street as well as street food.
The largest Starbucks is located just outside of the West Nanjing Road Station. This one serves alcohol as well. For the Chinese and Japanese anime fans, just beside East Nanjing Road Station, Exit 1, is a 7-storey building filled with various anime-related stores. It even has an anime store here. If you have additional days in Shanghai, other recommended places to visit are Shanghai Disneyland, Shanghai Museum, Shanghai Circus World, and Shanghai Jewish Refugees Museum. We are almost at the end of the video. Please leave a like and subscribe to be notified of new videos for Suzhou and Hangzhou. Lastly, I will go through some of the travel essentials. I would recommend using international roaming for mobile data access as you will be able to access otherwise restricted applications such as Facebook, Instagram, Google and Google Maps. And the prices are quite affordable nowadays. In terms of maps, Google Map will work but might be less accurate. And it won't detect your location while underground. So it will be useful to install Baidu Map as an alternative to get a bearing on your location even if it's is exclusively in Chinese. Prior to your trip, do install Alipay e-payment app. You will need to use this for all purchases. To register, you will need a photo of your passport and a credit card. As soon as you arrive at the airport, purchase a Shanghai Metro card. All locations in this video can be reached by Metro. The card can also be used in Suzhou and Hangzhou as well. Top up 100 RMB at a separate machine before using it. I find it is only necessary to use a bicycle in Hangzhou, but I will include this here for the blue bicycle type, which is the one I use. You can start using the bicycle by scanning the barcode and it will install a mini app on Alipay. Alipay has a translate function and just follow the instructions to set up and use. Do remember to go into the app and end the rental session once you are finished. If you are travelling to other nearby cities, high speed rail is the best option. You can buy the ticket through trip.com app as early as 14 days ahead. Click on the train icon and type in the cities you are travelling to and from. Once it secures the ticket, you will be notified and it will show the train, ticket class, waiting room and gate number train carriage and seat number. Entry to the train station involves showing your identification used to buy the tickets, which is your passport, and baggage scanning similar to an airport, but without the need to remove electronic items or water. Then go to your listed waiting room. The gates open 15 minutes prior to departure and you will need to queue on the manual gate line as you are using a passport instead of a China local identity card. The seats are very comfy and definitely a better choice than flight. In Suzhou and Hangzhou, you will need to use a taxi occasionally. In the Alipay app, it has a built-in DD app for taxi hailing similar to Uber. Just type in the place you want to go and it will ask for an approximate prepayment with some minor additional payment or even refund once the ride ends. Upon entering the taxi, let the driver know the last four digits of the phone number you used to book the ride. Hope this information helps you for your trip to Shanghai or China in general. Do check out my other videos as well.